How do the Mysterons recreate matter that has been completely destroyed? That's a very good point. Well, I can tell you the answer. It's oh, through the power of retrometabolism. And that's the end of this week's... <laughs> oh, there's more, is there? <laughs> well, I can hear you all asking and, and then waiting with bated breath. What yeah. is retrometabolism? Yeah. Absolutely right. Well... The only definitions that are provided in uh, the history of Captain Scarlet are not terribly scientific, I'm afraid. Mm. They've been described as reversing matter. Yeah. Mm. Beep, or beep, beep. <laughs> That's exactly Warning. what I was matter thinking. Matter reversing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or even as a, a method of recreating matter. Yeah. Yeah, not really. So yeah. they're about as close as the pseudoscientific stuff uh, as we're going to get, really, uh, jargon-wise. But yeah. did you know... That there is indeed a real life retro metabolism. Oh, what? Is there? Yes. Well, it, okay. grab your lab coat, Richard, and Podstrons, because this week's fab fact is going to get rather scientific. All right. Here comes the science bit. <laughs> nice. You're a very glamorous <laughs> assistant, aren't you? Yeah. Now, we all know that drugs are mostly made, of course, from organic compounds, don't we? Yes. Take, for example, penicillin. It's an organic compound made from mould grown in laboratory conditions. The species of fungus that is used to make penicillin is common. But what about drugs made from rare plants or rare substances? Yeah. Rather than harvest from endangered rainforests or exhaust a limited supply, scientists prefer to create synthetic substitutes where possible. But how does one do this? Well, you take a target molecule and break it down into simpler substances. For example... A Jerry Anderson podcast molecule, for example, might right. break down into um, randomizer, interview, uh -huh. and fab fact substances. Okay, yeah, I'm uh, yeah. right with you, yeah. Uh, that breaking down helps the chemist find the simplest way to synthesize the drug required. So if you had a patient suffering from derandomistritis... Yeah, it could happen. You could take the Jerry Anson podcast and synthesise just the bits you need to make a randomizer drug. Patient cured. Oh, I see. Science or, or is amazing. And a phalactic shock, as I saw AC <laughs> writing in our Facebook group. That's a good one, isn't it? And a phalactic shock. And a fanactic shock. Oh, and a fanactic shock. That's when you have shock. too much Anderson, if that's possible. Brilliant. No, impossible. But anyway, <laughs> as we've already discovered, basically, science is amazing. Uh, but joking aside, hmm. The process itself is called retrosynthetic analysis or oh, okay. retrosynthesis. Right. Drug designer and chemist Dr. Nicholas Bodor created a theory in parallel to retrosynthesis, which he began publishing on extensively in the 1990s, culminating in a book in 2012. Hmm. Instead of merely working backwards to synthesize a drug, Bodor also took a backwards approach to the way the human body metabolises organic compounds. In other words, how the drugs are broken down and absorbed into the human system for use. This approach is extremely useful for making drugs that are more effective, breaking down when and where they need to be used in the body. Yep. And the strategy was christened Retrometabolism. Way! Hey! <laughs> Great. So there you go. Also, retrometabolic drug design, which is the long version, and that method is still used today. Okay. So, Potstrons, fair warning here. Use of this type of retrometabolism will not make you indestructible, mm -hmm. but the real-life retrometabolism helps design safer and more effective medicines. Mm. So there you go. Now, I, like it. I do have a note here to say that we have in the past reach out, reached out to Dr. Bodor's office to see if he was a Captain Scarlet fan or if the series <laughs> yeah. had any influence on the term that he coined. And, and we're patiently waiting a reply. <laughs> wow, amazing. So, but I have listened to a couple of interviews with him and he's got a fantastic Transylvanian accent. Oh, has he now? Yeah. So wow, he, he sort that of, seems appropriate. I know, I feel like he could be a character in Captain Scarlet itself, yes. in fact, with his, his wonderful accent and his yes. science bit. So there you go. Retrometabolism is real, just not the one that you probably hoped for. Yeah, 